Hi, all my loyal viewers. Today is the 90th anniversary of the theatrical release of my Oscar-winning Silly Symphony classic, The Three Little Pigs. As you probably noticed, I recently had one of those tune makeovers to rejuvenate my looks. I mean, 90 years. <laughs> also, laughter helps keep tunes young. And the fact that my classic shorts are on Disney Plus certainly helps, along with when I started in that episode of The Wonderful World of Mickey Mouse a few years ago. So on honor the occasion, I am remaking a video I made 10 years ago using my newer audio-visual equipment and such, where I show off an interesting piece of memorabilia relating to my classic cartoon. Yep, it's one of those, those old Disney read-along book and audio sets. You know what I mean. See the pictures, hear the record, read the book. This could also be the tie-in to it also being 10 years now of read-along reviews on this YouTube channel, with many of them by me and several by different others. Heck, just last month, Daffy Duck got to do one for his 86th birthday. Book and audio read-alongs have been popular since at least the 1940s, with Capitol and Golden Records having their own. And of course, Disney Records wanted in on the action, beginning in 1965. In fact, this was one of the earliest titles in the series. It was made when Walt was still alive! Though this is a somewhat later pressing, and had the narration re-recorded sometime in the late 1960s. According to the back, the story is on a small LP, and as the narrator reading every word exactly seen in the book, it says, An entertaining way to assist non-readers to learn, and to help beginners to improve their reading ability. However, these early read-along Disney records were presented in a somewhat unusual manner. The first side of the disc had the entire story narrated by a single narrator, with no music, sound effects, or character voices. The second side of the song, or songs, relating to the story. In this case, the story is narrated by Robbie Lester, a.k.a. Miss Jessica, from Rankin Bass's Santa Claus is Coming to Town, and the singing voice of Miss Bianca and the Duchess and the Aristocats. Also, in addition to releases based on Disney's movies and shorts, there are also some original stories of the characters, unique adaptations of classic fairy tales Disney hadn't adapted yet, and even stories based on Disneyland attractions. Something tells me Disney Records was running out of ideas at one point. <laughs> now, as you can tell from the cover here, something is off. Yep, it's how I look. The illustrations, as you can see, are recycled from that little golden book adaptation of my cartoon from 1948. In this book, they made me look like this. Freaky black furred foul fellow or Br'er Fox like Wolf you see in the pages. Incidentally, my old friend Br'er Fox has a cousin who's a big fan of me and likes to dress up in the same clothes as I do. Sure is a hoop. However, Western Publishing, the parent company of these golden books at the time, also helped to publish these read-along book and audio sets in the past. They even did the little golden book read-alongs in the mid-1970s through the early 1980s, as you recall Mooshu reviewing one of them. Sadly, a year and a half ago, Disney discontinued their read-along line, coming to a sun finish with the Luca book and CD adaptation. Definitely the end of an era, with these read-alongs being around for 56 years before they pulled the plug. So much for them eventually doing a new adaptation of The Three Little Pigs. <laughs> of course, CDs are considered outdated nowadays, as Nick Wilde pointed out in Zootopia. Heck. Vinyl records have been outselling CDs again, thanks to the record resurgence. Well, they still can't top digital music downloads and streaming. Well, naturally, I still like to have physical media as a backup. But anyways, enough of this yakking. Let's listen to the record.
This is a Disneyland original little long playing record, and I am your story reader. I'm going to begin now to read the story of The Three Little Pigs. You can read along with me in your book. It's a nice school teacher song. kind of voice there. Tinkerbell rings her little bells like this. You know, the classic chime sound. Let's begin now. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who went out into the big world to build their homes and seek their fortunes. The first little pig did not like to work at all. He quickly built himself a house of straw. Then off he danced down the road to see how his brothers were getting along. The second little pig was building himself a house, too. He did not like to work any better than his brother, so he had decided to build a quick and easy house of sticks. Soon it was finished, too. It was not a very strong little house, but at least... Look, no strings on his violin. Now the second little pig was free to do what he liked. What he liked to do was to play his fiddle and dance. So while the first little pig tooted his flute, the second little pig sawed away on his fiddle, dancing as he played. Hmm. Then off danced the two little pigs down the road together to see how their brother was getting along. Oh, there's me again. The third little pig was a sober little pig. He was building a house, too, but he was building his of bricks. He did not mind hard work, and he wanted a stout little strong little house, for he knew that in the woods nearby there lived a big, bad wolf Me, who not that. better than to catch little pigs and eat them up. So slap, slosh, slap. Away he worked, laying bricks and smoothing mortar between them. <laughs> Laughed the first little pig when he saw his brother hard at work. <laughs> Laughed the second little pig. Come down and play with us, he called. But the busy little pig did not pause. <laughs> Laughed the two lazy little pigs, dancing along to the tune of the fiddle and the flute. Yeah, this time it's has got nice high fidelity sound, thanks to the stereo you speakers. You can laugh and dance and sing, their busy brother called after them. But I'll be safe and you'll be sorry when the wolf comes to the door. Yeah, well, that's a lyric in the original. <laughs> That illustration there is actually from a, a, a cover for a reprint edition of this. Just as the first pig reached his door... Ugh, look at that. The big, bad wolf. That's a dirt face of fire ever saw one. ...wheeled with fright and slammed the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in, cried the wolf. Not by the hair of my chinny-chin-chin, chin, said the little pig. Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in, roared the wolf. And he did. He blew the little straw house all to pieces. Although I don't see that. Away it sounded a little more like she was doing a witch's kiss. voice for the wolf. No sooner was he in the door when knock, 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 there was the big bad wolf. But of course, the little pigs would not let him come in. I'll fool those little pigs. Oh. That's not even trying. He left the little pig's house, and he hid behind a big tree. Soon the door opened, and the two little pigs peeked out. There was no wolf in sight. <laughs> Laughed the two little pigs. We fooled him. That's what they think. Soon there came another knock at the door. It was the big bad wolf again, but he had covered himself with a sheepskin and was curled up in a big basket looking like a little lamb. I was all like Velma Dinkley, one of the voices for her. Oh, the second little pig. I'm a poor little sheep with no place to sleep. Please open the door and let me in. Jeez. Said the big bad wolf in a sweet little voice. The little pig peeked through a crack of the door and he could see the wolf's big black paw. What paws? Only my, face. only fake hooves are Who's visible in there. My chinny chin chin. You can't fool us with that sheepskin, said the second little pig. Then I'll hope, then I'll puff, then I'll blow your house, <sighs> cried the angry old wolf. So he huffed, and he puffed. I could do better huffed, than that. And he huffed, <gasps> and he blew the little twig house all to pieces. Away raced the two little pigs. Yeah, so like, I could be wanted to make it versions of Velma Dinkley. That is not the new Mindy Kaling version and that gritty adult version on Max. Soon they were all singing gaily. 
This made the big bad wolf perfectly furious. No, by the hair of my chinny chin chin, he roared. Yep. I'll huff and I'll puff and I'll blow. Yep, that's the line I said in the classic short. The big bad wolf huffed and he puffed and he puffed and he huffed, but he could not blow down that little house of bricks. How could he get in? At last he thought of the chimney. So up he climbed quietly. Then with a snarl, Arr. down he jumped right into a kettle of boiling water. With a yelp of pain, he sprang straight up the chimney again and raced away into the woods. The three little pigs never saw him again and spent their time in the strong little brick house singing and dancing merrily. <laughs> Yeah, I still listen to records, so what do you expect? I'm old. I'm sure some of you noticed something missing from the story. My Jewish peddler disguise. Of course, all adaptations of the short omit it to avoid racial stereotypes. Then again, they did modify the story from the original fairy tale, deleting the turnip and apple picking and fair seeds feature in our versions, like Richard Scarry's takes on the story. Some of you are probably asking now, where was the song? It said, who's afraid of the big bad wolf on the book cover? Well, like I said, side one of the record contained a story, and side two had music and songs relating to it. Beginning in 1976, new releases would combine those elements, into the, often incorporating songs into the story, and also featuring background music and character voices. It was also like a way for children to re-enjoy a Disney movie or short in the days before home video was popular. But a word of note in this recording. If you remember when I reviewed this LP album a few years back, or, or when I did it over 10 years ago, the early primitive version of the podcast, you'll recognize the recording of the song. It's originally recorded and produced in 1958 for Disney Records' Mickey Mouse Club record line of 45 R of singles, release of 45 and 78 RPM. They even reused that recording for the 1978 book and audio adaptation of the story, as you might have all seen on this channel, adding narration a few additional sounds. Let's listen to the song section. Let me turn the record over. Ugh. Yeah, that's a problem. That's kind of a problem with the little LPs. There. Nothing. Yeah, I've played this recording numerous times on this YouTube channel. Now it is inferior to the original soundtrack, but figure what better way to celebrate the anniversary and stuff with my full familiarity. Sound as whiny as he did the original singing that part. I built my house up. Oh. I built my house up. You mean practical pigs sound like a sissy little girl? Arranged by 2D camera. Here's a line that uh, was, wasn't in the original. Not that kind of gay.
No, they didn't do the knocking noise like that in the original. They made machine gun sounds like. <laughs> oh, great. Here it comes. Oh, I do not sound like that. It didn't just collapse like that in the cartoon. Sounds more like the Sesame Street version of Big Dad Wolf from the 70s and 80s. And that's what they think. Sad violin music. You know what that means. I know, that's cute. Please open the door and let me in. I knew it should have made the bad sounds when I actually tried to sheep the skies in the original short. Wow. No wonder that recording combined these freakish illustrations would scare the crap out of kids back then. They didn't go flying like that. Stop! Stop, you little freak! I'll get you anyway! <laughs> That's Jimmy McDonald, the famed Disney sound effects artist, doing the voice. Here's an illustration that wasn't in the in later reprints. Ah, not enough time. Two bits. What a load of crappy crap crap. The recording, that is, so compared to the original. It's also like if the wolf in Disney's version Peter and the Wolf could talk. Come on, I did it longer than that. Well, if I can't blow the house in, I'll go up on the roof and come down the chimney, and I'll catch the three little pigs. Hurry! Light a fire under the kettle in the fireplace! Of course, it's not this part. And they put turpentine in the kettle, too. Oh, that hurt. Really exaggerate my yelps there. You see what I mean? I guess with all the releases they had back then, Disney Records did not know how to properly release like classic on the vinyl or whatever. Of course, when they collaborated with Fisher Price in its storybook and tape, they did a more faithful adaptation somewhat. Then of course there was the Silly Symphony Collection, released several years back that I have, where I finally had the original cartoon soundtrack released on record officially. But anyways, here's to 90 years of Disney's Three Little Pigs, plus me. <clears throat> it's not the only Disney Records-related milestone coming up soon this YouTube channel. Now, Toon Fox Detective Sam Valentino will be reviewing the next one to come out next month. And that should clue you in on what the title should be. <laughs>
So stay tuned to this YouTube channel to find out.